Good afternoon. Uh, we are starting the in, here in number eight of the 179 period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission. My name is Commissioner Julissa Manticha Falcom. I'm the first vice president of the commission. Together with me today are Commissioner Esmeralda Arosemena. She's the country reporter and also the second vice president, Commissioner Flavia Piovesan, Commissioner Estuardo Rallon. Also, we have the acting executive secretary and the interim uh, executive secretary, Marisol Blanchard, and the special reporter for freedom of expression, Pedro Vaca. This is a hearing to listen to the experience of the Mexican state regarding their national system for the follow-up of the recommendations of human rights. The hearing was requested by the state of Mexico, by the National Commission of Human Rights of the Foreign Ministry of Mexico, but there are several organizations of the civil society that are participating today. I would like to greet the representatives of civil society organizations and the representatives of the states. The goal is to present the system of follow up the recommendations of the Mexican states that is a representative initiative for the region in order to transmit the processes of follow up recommendations of international obligations more transparent. Uh, talking about the methodology of today's hearing, I would like to let you know that we have a timer that will indicate times or each party will have to speak. We will start with the presentation of the state for 20 minutes, then we will give the floor to civil society organizations for 20 minutes, then there will be comments by the commissioners for 20 minutes, and then we will have a second round. We have the comments of the state, civil society organizations comments, and then the closure of the session that, that will be led by the commission. I also would like to tell you that we have simultaneous interpretation. The hearing is also with subtitles, and that is very important in order to include and to reach more people. We would like to ask you that you mute yourselves when you are not uh, talking, and we would like you to have your cameras on, please. Also, I would ask you that when you request the floor, you introduce yourselves. We will come start uh, taking into consideration the timer that we have on the screen in order not to interrupt you and in order to finish your presentation on time. We will give the floor to the state now. Good afternoon, honorable commissioners, representatives of civil society organizations, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to the Commission of Human Rights for giving us this space with civil society organizations in order to have a dialogue regarding the experience of the Mexican state with the system for the follow-up of international recommendations in the area of human rights. It is a pleasure to be able to have this conversation with you, with civil society organizations, and with the bodies of the Inter-American system. And we hope that we can strengthen and consolidate the mechanism and to take into consideration the status of the recommendations sent to the countries and the actions that have been taken to comply with those recommendations. The international recommendations are a benchmark regarding the status of human rights and uh, democratic, democratic societies need, need to guarantee those recommendations and those human rights. And those, are also, those rights are for all persons within the uh, Mexican territory. We want to make the attention and the follow-up of the recommendations more transparent. Ladies and gentlemen and commissioners, this fruitful meeting will help us to reaffirm the commitment of the state of Mexico to the promotion and protection of human rights, especially regarding the follow-up of international recommendations. Our efforts are part of the National Program of Human Rights 2024 in Mexico. 
It was published on December the 10th in the official bulletin of the government. And the goal is to develop a national policy in the area of human rights that uh, guarantees or ensures consistency and articulation between the different programs, institutions, and budgets in Mexico in the area of human rights. Our uh, priority strategy 1.4, this program promotes the compliance of international commitments and recommendations in the area of human rights. And the system is the main instrument a follow-up of international recommendations of human rights. And that's why we consider that it contributes to the compliance and the realization of this priority strategy 1.4. The foreign ministry, ministry considers that the system is key to promote the protection and the promotion and respect of human rights in the country. And I would like to acknowledge the work of my collaborators, the General Direction of Human Rights and Democracy of the Under Secretariat of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I would like to give the floor to Mr. Vagina so he can talk about the system. Thank you, Under Secretary Marta Delgada, Delgado, and we thank you for giving us the floor and giving this, us this space to share the information that we have about the system. Uh, in February 2020, the Under Secretariat of Human Rights and Bilateral Affairs of the Foreign Ministry presented the already mentioned system before governmental authorities, academia, representatives of civil society organizations, and diplomatic bodies in Mexico. The CERIS is an electronic platform that classifies the over 100 and uh, 1,500 uh, international recommendations that have been formulated to the Mexico uh, to the state of Mexico since 1994 in order to comply with the highest standards of human rights at the national and international level with transparency and accountability so that we are able to follow up the recommendations and the commitments of the state and international level. The system tries to create public knowledge regard by promoting the actions of the government in order to guarantee high standards in the area of human rights. As you can see on your screens, on the right, you will see the homepage of the system. I will talk about the system later and about the home side of the site later, later. The system analyzes the Secretariat of Human Rights, and we took into consideration the different inter-American organizations and universal organizations that Mexico recognizes. It includes the analysis of the recommendations, but also the actions reported by the authorities that have to deal with the follow-up of those recommendations. As you can see in this slide, is that Mexico is a state party to 57 international treaties and protocols in the area of human rights that belong to the universal system and to the American system. We include 33 entities that have emitted or have issued recommendations to Mexico up to now. 31 from the universal system and two from the inter-American system. On the right, you see a simplified version of the system of follow-up of attention of the international recommendations that our country has received. The system contributes to the whole process, the reception and adoption of recommendations, the follow-up of the recommendations, and the preparing of uh, regular reports are the key component of the work thanks to the platform. As you can see on the slide, we have the opportunity areas that this area or this department has identified. There was a fragmentation and a lack of organization. There were other procedures that, and those procedures were not uh, carried out according to a uh, consistent criteria. There was a lack of coordination between the institutions, especially due to the changes that occur within uh, the foreign ministry. This created several challenges and problems in order to comply with the reports that the state of Mexico needed to comply with. 
In this regard, there was no general procedure of coordination. Everything was decentralized. And sometimes what we had is several institutional failures and errors. And that's why the system tries to improve the articulation of the bodies within the government in order to make consultation processes more efficient. With this, we try to improve our accountability at a national and sub-regional level, and we would like to achieve results. This process of systematization also needs uh, is aimed at creating a historical memory of the recommendations that were received in order to address and to have evaluations by civil society organizations and by academia and by go the government in order to have a better follow up of the recommendations. Now you can see a functioning of the system since the reception of the international recommendations up to the final observation stage. As you can see, we created a methodology that is that is through collaboration, and we are able to disaggregate the recommendations based on different thematic areas in a database that is public and that is constantly updated and authorities and local and federal can have access to these results and to the uh, database. And this allows to promote and we have their information for the reports. Up to now, Mexico has over 3,500 recommendations out of which 459 belong to the Inter-American system. And those include the rulings of the Inter-American Inter -American Court of the of, of human rights. This is the number of recommendations that Mexico has received. And there you have the different thematics that are covered by those recommendations. A detailed analysis of these recommendations shows uh, the relationship between the total number of recommendations and the actions requested to the state. You can see here in this general Overview is that how many recommendations belong to the Inter-American system, to the universal system, how many actions have been reported, and how many recommendations against how many actions have been carried out, and the types of actions that Mexico is conducting. Out of all the recommendations received by the state of Mexico since 1994, 57% had reported actions. On the other side of the screen, you can see the different types of actions taken by the state of Mexico. For example, uh, legislative ch changes, creation of protocols, investigation of crimes, guidelines, and different other uh, measures that have held to the systematization made by the foreign ministry. The system is changing all the time. This is the first version. I will show it to you later. But we are here to listen to you and to create better versions of the system so that the tool can cover all the needs uh, of the government and also the needs of academia, civil society organizations, the reporters and international organizations in the area of human rights. As you can see here, you can see the website or you can scan the QR code and our team will do that uh, in real time as we explain this. Up to now, it is for not for laptops, but desktop computers. We will develop uh, another uh, version so you can access uh, through your cell phone. Once you go into the website, you will see that we uh, you we have the uh, the number of recommendations in real time, the number of entities, the number of topics, and finally the name of reported actions. It is important to highlight that part of the methodology to analyze can be seen in the document sections and downloaded for its analysis and. And in case you want to collaborate to improve when you move 
down you can see the welcome page about the city and um, the how it works also a message from the undersecretary that uh, retells the origins then the different uh, participation of the allies that have contributed to the development of this uh, platform. We want to thank the European Union and other organizations that have helped us with the systematization of these platforms. As you can see here, the graphs are in real time and you can see not only the recommendations but also the institutions, Mexican institutions, that are responsible for dealing with them and report the actions they have carried out to contribute to the compliance with the recommendation. You can also see the evolution of these recommendations. You can do simple uh, searches by clicking the different elements on the web page. And it is also important to look at these bars that allow us to do an advanced search, they can be visualized on the web page or you can download them to your computer to read them later. You can see all the topics, the entities, the authorities in charge, the required action and all the elements that are being dealt with. The uh, sustainable development goal it contributes to population and different elements. It is important to note that this is a tool that is being developed that is being improved when you search um, a year or a topic or mechanism, a body, you can look at the different details and do advanced search as well. We are developing and improving this uh, tool constantly at the beginning of the year we made a consultation with different government agencies to update the available information to reflect the actions carried out since the beginning of the administration until now. In the first quarter of 2021, the system will have all updated information up to the end of 2020, and we are working on the 2.0 version that includes innovation and it will explain all the information from the, ministry, from the foreign ministry and all the dependencies that participate in the federal government will be able to upload information since their offices as different sources will be enabled. The platform is being updated constantly and it keeps information from the state that explains how we are carrying out our actions to implement the international recommendations. We need to say that from an international point of view, a lot of interest has been drawn up to the system and there are six or seven countries that want to collaborate with Mexico. So as to have a similar instrument with similar parameters that allow us, this is very important, to have uh, an exchange of information between the different uh, countries to allow synergies and collaboration. For example, Canada and other countries that are having bilateral dialogue with the country, uh, reaching an agreement that will we uh, announce soon. This is an instrument that may um, facilitate the appropriation of the recommendations to translate them into working plans for the uh, competent authorities and guarantee human rights in the Mexican state. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to highlight that the system shows the commitment of uh, the government of Mexico that is progressive and democratic in favor of multilateralism and international cooperation acknowledged in international um, duties in terms of human rights. We want to create a tool that is useful for the government, but also uh, for the human rights organizations. We want to offer a tool that has unlimited possibilities to systematize the actions to implement recommendations, and that will only be achieved by gathering the efforts of international organizations, the governments, the academia, the so 
the civil organizations to face our current challenges. Dear commissioners, this is all from the representative of the state, unless um, Delgado wants to add uh, further information. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Bashinas, and that's all. We give back the floor to Commissioner Mantilla. Thank you for your presentation. You have two minutes and 40 seconds left. And now I will give the floor to the civil society. There are different, there are four groups. Um, please identify and present yourselves. And please remember that you need to activate options to read uh, captions or subtitles for those who need them. You have 20 minutes now. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am the coordinator of Incidencia Internacional of the Rights for, it's a network of human rights of organizations in the state of Mexico. I'm together with my colleagues, Paula Saucedo, in, on behalf of an articulation of more organizations uh, that work with the human rights defense and follow up the recommendations um, in Mexico. Dear commissioners, uh, collectives of the civil society, academia, state of Mexico, and general public, we would like to thank you for the opportunity of having this dialogue. And we want to express the need to discuss in a clear way about the implementation of international recommendations by the Mexican state. We are going to give you a detailed and written um, document. And now we will express in a brief way the reasons why we consider that the Mexican state, in spite of presenting uh, this system is not complying with the recommendations made by the OIS to strengthen uh, capacities for the for the uh, follow up and attention of the recommendations that has been described in the human rights program. Secondly, Maria Corina Muscos is going to mention the arbitrary exclusion of the civil society from the system and the work carried out to do the follow-up of international recommendations. Thirdly, we will present an analytic report carried out by the observatory of the, uh, of the UNAM and the direct impact in the uh, system of cases and precautionary measures. Finally, we want to uh, highlight the, the work of the uh, system to do the follow-up of the recommendation. In terms of general recommendations to the state, we want to start by highlighting that this is not a national system of follow-up for the implementation of international recommendations. We want the state to develop a mechanism that validates the implementation of these recommendations. The mechanism should be constantly updated on human and monetary resources so as for it to work efficiency efficiently. Also, the mechanism should be created immediately. The system was not designed and designed in a collaborative or participatory way. The Civil society was left aside, has not been involved. That's why we invite the government to have a dialogue with civil society, including experts and the academia, uh, experts on the implementation of mechanisms to do this follow-up in order to have a shared agendas to create a national mechanism. The Inter-American Commission can guarantee this dialogue between the parties and we are available to sign different agreements in order to achieve this dialogue. 
the different um, measures and mechanisms will be described in this hearing and we request the state to receive this uh, preliminary analysis for its consideration the system does not include the guidelines and regarding the follow-up of the recommendations the CMOR is not being used and the other tools provided by Inter-American system. We want to have a dialogue with the Mexican state to improve the system uh, so as to integrate it to the uh, national system and the comparative analysis of these recommendations. The system should comply with international standards so as to be a national system that is comprehensive. It should include collaboration with other government agencies to follow up recommendations. Now, Maria Colina Musco will continue with the presentation now, and she will make reference to the precedence in the creation of the system. Good afternoon, honorable commissioners. As my colleague Olga was mentioning, in this presentation, I will talk about back information regarding the system. In recent years, uh, Mexico has been observed by several bodies and by UN experts and by experts of the Inter-American system. The final observations and recommendations of those bodies have led to 3,500 uh, recommendations that are very relevant to face the critical situation of human rights in my country. It is worrisome that the state has not complied with the recommendations by saying that those decisions or those recommendations are not mandatory. For example, regarding the three rulings on disappear for disappearance of the UN Committee on Human Rights, the the state of Mexico did not consider that those recommendations were mandatory and those rules were mandatory. There has been no follow up of those cases and therefore since 2018 within the framework of the third periodical exam of Mexico, a huge group of civil society organizations started to have a dialogue with several uh, government agencies, including the foreign ministry, the SEGOV and the National Commission of Human Rights. In each of these agencies, we reach, we draw several conclusions. Due to the high number of recommendations, a coordinated effort between the different agencies and a single mechanism of the fo follow-up of the international recommendations were required. The working meetings ended up very early with the foreign ministry, but with the national commission, we have weekly meetings until the change of the head of the commission regarding the relationship with the foreign ministry since 2018 we had ad hoc meetings be before and after each periodical review and we had prepared a roadmap and agreements towards the creation of the only mechanism for the follow-up of recommendations in the area of migration it's important to mention that uh, opposite to the proposal of a single mechanism in 2019, there was a mechanism for recommendation or for the follow up of international recommendations in the area of migration, though uh, this mechanism has never been uh, monitored. Therefore, also migrants have working tables with the foreign ministry and also they presented their claims and they also presented action plans in order to assess that matrix or that plan of action, the foreign ministry worked with other government agencies. However, the recommendations made by civil society organizations, such as a lack of consultation to uh, the offices of migrant persons and the legislative power and the lack of a budget for the implementation of the actions. It, a follow-up mechanism is much more than a matrix of information. It is a tool that should be part of the mechanism and that all the stages should be considered. With the change of administration, the working meetings were no longer held. Then the last year, the foreign ministry presented the service, but the system was not prepared with civil society organizations. We were not consulted 
for the creation of the system, and there has been no oversight of the mechanism since 2018. Due to the pandemic, the foreign ministry interrupted all working meetings with civil society organizations. Those were replaced by thematic webinars, and civil society organizations only can send their questions on the chat. Also, the foreign ministry said some years ago that they were talking with the United Nations in order to be part of a regional project to create a follow-up mechanism. But then the UN office in Mexico um, said that that information was not real. Uh, at the beginning of this year, this group of civil society organizations sent a letter to the foreign ministry in order to reassume the dialogue and to start with the to work on the international system of recommendations. The foreign ministry has not yet uh, has not replied to our demand. Our my, my colleague from the Inter American Observatory of Human Rights and also from the Center of Legal Studies of the University of Mexico will make her presentation. Thank you, Marco. Good afternoon, commissioners, executive, secretary. It's a pleasure to be part of this uh, hearing. I would like to share my screen. Is that possible? Sorry for the delay. As Marco has said, can you hear me well? I am part of the American System Observatory and we made an analysis of the system. We considered three aspects, its methodology, its database, and the advanced search option. That is the main option that the system has to search for recommendations and the actions taken to comply with the recommendations. Uh, we would like to recognize the interest of the Mexican government to have a tool that has it makes a follow-up of the recommendations made by international organizations. However, after reviewing this system, we have several comments to make. I will present them very briefly with a detailed document the use of methodology that was sought for the UN system. The Sarith methodology shows how it was uh, prepared at the very beginning to systematize the recommendations made by the UN system. When we talk about issuing entities, only treaty bodies and special procedures are considered and the Inter-American system of human rights is not included. Second comment. The Sarith has a database in which there is no dialogue between the recommendations and the actions taken. On the uh, screen that you are seeing, you see that the database includes a sheet, a sheet of recommendations and a sheet of actions taken. The users cannot see at the same time the recommendations and the actions taken. Third comment, the recommendations are not complete. The recommendations that appear are only related to some of the sources in which some recommendations have been issued. For example, uh, for the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, there are recommendations in country reports, there are recommendations regarding the thematic report, and also recommendations from an annual report of the commission. But there are no recommendations included from precautionary measures, merit reports, or friendly settlement agreements. Fourth comment, recommendations do not establish the compliance deadlines and do not mention the beneficiaries of those recommendations. Here you have the part for the recommendations and you see here the effectiveness of the recommendation and you see that the options that you have there is, are yes or no, where when there are some recommendations that have deadlines on the database, in the variable regarding the beneficiaries of the recommendation, they included some categories, for example, persons, victims of violations of human rights or general public, when there are some measures that make an emphasis on the beneficiaries. Five common, we have uh, recommendations that were uh, badly classified. 
for example, the recommendation that has to do with the case of women victims of sexual torture in a tank against Mexico, when we see the recommendations, the recommendations belong to the case Alvarado. And that is one of the main examples that are on the system. Another comment, it's because it, uh, we uh, were surprised that most information there is not validated by the victims when it comes to the actions taken. Those are not validated by civil society organizations nor by the victims. And therefore the information in the database is not as without sources. Seven, when it comes to the inclusion or the integration of the actions taken, is done, this is done in a random way. The actions taken have also fed the database according to the consultations to the government agencies. We see that the consultations were carried out in 2008, in three months, and in 2020. And therefore, the feedback to the database is not permanent and is random or uh, not all the time. Eight. The database of actions taken does not include information regarding the body that issue the recommendation or that take the action and there is no text regarding the recommendation so we don't see the text of the recommendation what we have there is a number and in order to know what the recommendation was you need to go to the sheet regarding the recommendations and there is no information regarding the entity that issued the recommendation nine the Advanced search option is very limited. As uh, Mr. Vachina said, these are the fields with which you can make advanced searches. But the field, for example, of the decision is not included. If you want to search which the recommendations are regarding a friendly settlement uh, uh, agreement, that is not possible. The only uh, filter that could help us is the Asian entity, but we will have all the recommendations made by the Inter-American Commission regarding the topic that it could be the human rights situation in a place without making a targeted search or an advanced search regarding a specific recommendation. And the last comment that I would like to say is, this is very relevant, is that the system is not accessible. Um, understand the American system and the use of database and the system requires to be reconfigured so that it's accessible and so that it des its design is um, user-friendly. Now we'd like to give the floor to Alejandra Gonza. She belongs to the delegation of the observatory to give her message. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Alejandra Gonza. I'm Director of Global Defense and Human Rights. I'm a U.S. organization that represents victims before the Inter-American system and before the U.N. We include iconic cases in Mexico. The compliance of international recommendations is the only way forward in order to overcome the serious crisis of human rights in Mexico. Disappearance, violence against women, discrimination, poverty, militarization. There is the a need for Mexico to comply with international recommendations, especially when it comes to cases and international protection. And the main barriers that we found as users of the system are the following. First, the system does not comply with the obligations stated by the international recommendations uh, based on Pacta Sur Servanda, good faith, and the international treatments that help a state use internal or national legislation to comply with international recommendations. That the system says that there is no need or there is no obligation to comply with international obligations is a problem in itself. And we use also the American system and it's not included here. And for example, we use those systems a lot. For example, the system of petition and cases. Unfortunately, in spite of the willingness of Mexico to support the Inter-American Commission, usually is a problem. Mexico should recognize and acknowledge the, uh, that, these obligation, that these recommendations are an obligation. For example, there is also a lack of compliance with international parameters. For example, the example had to do with the friendly settlement agreements. And those 
recommendations, those that are there in those friendly settlement agreements are not included either. The system is not a comprehensive mechanism of compliance and happens within a context where there is a weakening of some key organizations or bodies. And finally, there are no good practices and we can, they could have taken some good practices from some government agencies, for example, the explicit acknowledgement of the protocol of search of the National Commission for the Search of Disappeared People in Mexico, because they are not complying with the obligation of international recommendations, and they should be coordinating the implementation of all the government agencies. The foreign ministry should or could design this protocol of follow-up based on best practices and should abandon that double speech of commitment to international law and international human rights law. And then because at the national level, they say that those recommendations are not an obligation. And we work together with the states at the national level. So Mexico needs to move ahead in order to conclude I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Maria Claire Costa, that belongs to the Colectivo Contra la Impunidad. Thank you. You are out of time, but maybe you can use your time now and reduce your time in your second participation. Buenas tardes a todos Good afternoon a todas. to everyone. Eh, Mi nombre es Mariclera Costa, My name is soy Mariclera la presidenta Costa. de Justicia president Transicional en México. Justicia Transicional y hoy México. intervengo en representación del colectivo contra la impunidad, conformado por un grupo de organizaciones civiles, de civiles, organizaciones de derechos de derechos humanos, society, human rights defenders, especialized in justice topics de familiares de and collectives de of relatives of victims of disappeared persons in different states of the country. Impunidemia monitorea la situación y el desempeño de la Fiscalía General and de the performance y de of the fiscalías estatales. Uh, Office of the Attorney General in the Republic. Different sabemos, para institutions y perseguir that la criminalidad are incompetent to país. investigate um, las graves violaciones criminality a los in the country, humanos, especially serious violations of human rights that are key de las recomendaciones in the compliance formuladas of por la the recommendations published by the Commission to the Mexican State. Now we will make reference to this institution. The system registers 85 recommendations aimed at the Mexican state related to the uh, Office of the Attorney General. Informa que por lo menos 45 reportan al menos una acción adoptada por esta one action adopted by the Una de esas recomendaciones registrada con el número 0985 Consiste en, cito, fortalecer a las procuradurías en el país en materia de capacitación técnica e independencia con el fin de garantizar una debida investigación. Se trata de la recomendación número 28, que fue formulada en el informe del país Published by the country report situation of human rights in Mexico, published by the Inter-American Commission in 2016. Our presented in October 2020 information to the Commission about the lack of compliance of this recommendation on part of the Mexican state. El CERID registra the tres acciones adoptadas por la Fiscalía General para darle cumplimiento office a dicha recomendación. General to comply la with primera that recommendation. data de 2012, es decir, antes de que se emitiera la recomendación, y consiste en la publicación de la Ley General para prevenir, sancionar y erradicar los delitos en materia de trata de personas y para la protección de asistencia a las víctimas de estos delitos. La segunda de 2020 consiste en la capacitación llevada a cabo durante la contingencia sanitaria de personas servidoras que realizan funciones vinculadas a la Procuración de Justicia, como son el personal de la Secretaría de Defensa Nacional, 
la Secretaría de Marina, la Guardia Nacional, entre otras. National la Guard, among también del 2020, consiste en el incremento de la capacitación a distancia de servidores públicos y público en general en temas de discriminación por parte del Consejo Nacional para prevenir Council for the de las tres acciones reportadas, una de ellas ocurrió antes de la recomendación que supuestamente estuvo dirigida a cumplir. Otra se refiere a capacitaciones a instituciones de seguridad y no a servidores públicos de la Fiscalía. Tampoco precisa los temas sobre los cuales se realizó dicha capacitación. Cabe agregar que el otorgamiento de facultades de investigación a cuerpos de seguridad militarizados como la Guardia Nacional ha sido duramente cuestionado porque deja el control de la iglesia en manos de quienes pueden estar directamente involucrados en violaciones graves que se deben vivir. La tercera acción ni siquiera ha sido impulsada por la propia Fiscalía General, sino por una entidad de este. El CERI, como se ha demostrado, no solo carece de criterios para realizar al menos una evaluación preliminar de las acciones que se In order to analyze the actions si to determine con la whether they de are related to Pero lo their recommendation. Carece de un mecanismo para contrastar dicha información con la sociedad civil y las propias víctimas. La información que registra el CERI respecto a esta recomendación ofrece una realidad distorsionada y hasta contraria a los objetivos de la Fiscalía General. Lamentablemente, en la realidad constatable, hace apenas unos días, el Senado de la República aprobó derogar la actual legislación orgánica de la Fiscalía General, construida en un esfuerzo participativo con organizaciones de la sociedad civil para reemplazarla por una nueva legislación que no solo delimita las capacidades de investigación de crímenes complejos, también elimina todas las obligaciones de la Fiscalía respecto de la Office of the General la nueva ley elimina la independencia law técnica de los fiscales, los mecanismos transparentes y meritocráticos general, para elegirlos y también los mecanismos, mecanismos de participación ciudadana y de rendición de cuentas de la Fiscalía General. En conclusión, los últimos acontecimientos muestran un retroceso y un incumplimiento agravado de esta reforma. Lo mismo puede decirse de muchas otras recomendaciones vinculadas a temas como la creación de una entidad autónoma, de servicios forenses, el monitoreo e implementación del nuevo sistema penal acusatorio, entre otros. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Muy bien. We should bear that in mind. Thank you. Uh, please turn off your microphones when you are not speaking to avoid interruptions. Before giving the floor to my colleagues, I would like to start this uh, part acknowledging the state for its willingness of requesting this um, hearing, developing a tool to follow up international recommendations as an international body, we value and state to develop this uh, tool. And I want to express my gratitude to each of the um, organizations from the civil society for their observations. And we are sure that the state will be able to take them into account for the assessment of the tool and its improvement. So. Now we will begin with the participation of the commissioners. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena, that is the rapporteur for the country. Thank you, Madam Vice President. I agree with what she said. I want to acknowledge the call for this hearing The state is thus showing willingness to share this information, but also 
this opportunity of having a hearing in which we can listen to the civil society organizations that give us the opportunity to make this effort of commitment and mandate that the commission has as um, a possibility to build bridges. That is the value of this hearing, to be a bridge, to be able to communicate each other and listen to the different viewpoints assess technical and scientific assessments and evaluations that the civil society has expressed today. So I want to acknowledge that the presentation of a tool that is new, that is being developed as an initiative from a state that acknowledges and the commission values that the importance of international systems of the recommendations to connect them with the government institutions, but with the society as well. So I want to highlight this because Dr. Machinas was mentioning in his presentation about a transparency, accountability, clear principles that has allowed us to have this hearing, having information from both parties. In this search in, of trying to be a bridge, between the work carried out by the authorities and the Mexican uh, society being a bridge. And when I listen to the civil society, the question that I could ask to the state has to do with deficiencies, with different topics that I'm not an expert, but I can think on the possibilities to improve the system by identifying aspects that need to be assessed that to improve the efficiency of, of a system like this one. You know that our Seymour is trying to be developed in order to be perfect so as to deal with the information that is available to all users of the system and not only users, those who study the system, researchers. So this is a great opportunity to have this dialogue. So the question to the state has to do with that. The commission is available to do this effort. There, is there a proposal, a possibility of a proposal to open a dialogue with the civil society, with the organizations that are present today that have mentioned important technical aspects and following that line of improvement of a tool, the search for the efficiency of a tool, if we can count with this participation, this inclusion of the civil society, of the institutions, particular institutions that should be taking the responsibilities for this effort and for this work. So 
that is what I want to say uh, to request information from the state about this openness, about this transparency, accountability, and improve a tool that I think it's quite positive because of the possibility it offers, that is to handle or manage recommendations that the international and inter-American system give to Mexico and trying to improve the efficiency. I think that Flavia, I would say the efficiency of the impact of our recommendation in the different countries. So thank you, Commissioner, Madam Vice President. Thank you, Commissioner. I will give the floor to Second Vice President, Commissioner Piovesan. Thank you, Pre President. I would like to share or to second the feelings of Commissioner Esmeralda. I think that this is a strategic time in order to strengthen this tool by talking to civil society organizations in a transparent manner, and also with the support and the technical cooperation of the commission. I would like to greet the representatives of the states and the very qualified civil society organizations. Again, I think that this tool has a great potential to show uh, the commitment of the state of Mexico to international human rights at the also regional inter uh, human rights system. And there is all the thing of accountability and transparency, but there is a lot of things that could be improved. And I think that the contributions made by the civil society organizations are very good. There is a list of constructive criticism that it could be used in order to improve the system. I think that something there is something key for the commission and for the universal system, the inter-American system, that is the implementation, compliance, and the impact that has to do with effectiveness. The commission includes effectiveness as a key component of its agenda. Our transforming mandate is not only about publishing our merits reports or our country reports, thematic reports, when we grant or not a precautionary measure, but we need to have follow up. We need to evaluate the situation of the victims and the impact if the state comply with the recommendations or not, what the barriers are and what the potential is. And the commission has the monitoring section in 2018. After that, we created the regional CIMORE. We officially launched it in June 2020. Now we have over 4,700 in the system. They are issued by the commission in its thematic reports, marriage reports, and country reports, friendly settlement agreements. So we are promoting this tool with strategic actors of the inter-American system. And we have the ambition of improving the channels of participations in the follow-up of the recommendations by having uh, civil society organizations, academia, and other national institutes of human rights involved in the process. And in July, we will be launching the impact observatory of the Inter-American Commission. So we are trying to follow this agenda. I have three concerns. The first has to do with the democratic component of the system. Uh, I was surprised of the cooperation methodology mentioned by the state, but then the criticism by civil society organizations that they were not able to participate in the development of the strategy of the system. 
So we need to have a better relationship with civil society organizations. We need to have that relationship in order to improve and to promote a cooperation methodology. We need to have the voices of the victims of civil society organizations in order to refine the system and to improve the system and to identify the actions taken by the state based on those recommendations. That is my first concern. My second concern has to do with another recommendation made by civil society organizations. And this is something that we are promoting in the commission. We have a report on best practices. And I think that that is key. We, need sh we should have national mechanisms and together with the tool that systematizes recommendations, I think that's a very important measure. The, the 3,500 recommendations, the actions that have been reported and taken, but apart from classifying and systematizing the recommendations, I have this question for the state and for civil society organizations, how we can improve the national mechanisms there are laws, there are commissions and committees. We have democratic institutions. And how is Mexico promoting the national mechanism of implementation of the recommendations? Because I agree with civil society organizations. Uh, when I listened to Mrs. Magdalena, my first reaction was the following. We have the methodology that is more related to the global system, the reports, the states, etc. But I think that the comprehensive reparation concept that is promoted by the inter-American system should be included, should be reflected on the mechanism. And third, I believe that the future of the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights has is conditioned to the national mechanisms of the implementation of our recommendations. And my third comment has to do with the dialogue between the system, CERID, and the in, uh, regional CIMORE. The goal of the commission is to build a bridge with each of the 35 states of the OAS in order to have feedback I think that the regional assembly can help and we will have the impact observatory that will be launched in July. We have 57% of actions that have been taken. We need to see what is being complied, how the recommendations are complied. We need to identify the impacts. We need to identify the public policies that have been cremated and the legal framework that has been uh, created in order to respond to the international recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to ask Commissioner Rolón if he has any questions or comments. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet my colleagues civil society organizations and the representation of the state. First, I would like to second the words of the president and of my colleagues of recognizing the role of the state of Mexico for requesting the hearing and for the efforts to implement this system. Uh, every mechanism can be improved. And today I would like also to acknowledge the work done of civil society organizations because they made very clear recommendations and suggestions regarding improve, uh, improvements that could be made to the system. The commission has said that civil society organizations are key actors in any monitoring mechanism. And that's why I will call upon the strengthening of the dialogue. As civil society organizations requested later, uh, earlier today, there could be some mechanism, a working table, maybe 
uh, there should be more information, these specific aspects, and they could be improved, and maybe we could have concrete actions in order to improve the system. And the other is a question for the state. I was surprised that one of the adjustments suggested by the civil society is that the system did not include recommendations from merits reports and precautionary measures of the Inter-American system. And my question is, well, there is a void there, or if this is a mistake in the platform. I was surprised of that, and I would like to make the question, that's why. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I would like to give the floor to the Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression, Pedro Vaca. Thank you, President. I also would like to second the congratulations to the state of Mexico for the system. We know that there are a lot of challenges ahead. I have one question uh, for the state and is in methodological terms, uh, how do you think that the questions and the recommendations of civil society organizations could be included in the system in order to increase the capacity of the state in order to comply with those recommendations? This percentage uh, should not only cover the actions taken, but also the impact of those actions. That's it. Thank you very much. The special rapporteur for economic, social, cultural, environmental rights has joined the meeting. I don't know if she has any comments. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to uh, thank you for all your efforts. I want to regret or to apologize because I, has not, I have not been able to join before because of connectivity issues. I'm very interested in the work done by uh, all the groups. I know that the UNAM is working on a mechanism and I would like, I think that that effort should be also uh, promoted. The acting executive secretary has any questions? I think that the most important questions were already presented by the commissioners regarding the Inter-American Simore the series, but I would like to take make the most of this opportunity to congratulate the state of Mexico for the tool. And we have written down all the observations made by civil society organizations and the executive secretariat will offer all the support and technical cooperation to the state of Mexico regarding the compliance of program 21 of the strategic plan that is focused on the follow-up of the recommendations. Thank you very much, Mrs. Pulido. We will start with the second part of this hearing. I will give the floor to the state for 12 minutes. Thank you. We would like to show our gratitude to the Inter-American Commission, to the commissioners and to the special rapporteurs for uh, making all the comments that you have made. And we also would like to thank civil society organizations that have analyzed the system in detail and have made several suggestions and questions. There are some questions that can be answered all together. And the first is the following. The state is here in a voluntary way to show a tool that is developing and to have an open dialogue with civil society organizations and with the Inter-American Commission as an intermediary, because this shows that we are at your disposal that the creation of the tool shows this. We would like to thank the acknowledgement and the efforts made. The development of the tool, that is a system for the evaluation of the follow-up of the recommendations of the international recommendations in the area of human rights, occurs in the middle of a context about what we do in order to follow up the recommendations. That 
is the response of the state of Mexico in order to have a tool that would help us, all of us, to have information in order to improve the attention to the recommendations. That is not the single tool in Latin America. There, are, there is another tool, the one created by the state of Paraguay, and they have been working together with the commission. We believe that it's important to have a discussion, a regional international debate on tools and also on the mechanism. And I would like to talk about uh, those two things. In these discussions, there is uh, there are no elements that show that this is an ideal tool, but we included some of the things that could be helpful. We had several exchanges with the UNOHCHR and with the commission, and we included some elements that require a specific follow-up. Mexico participates of both systems, the universal system and the inter-American system, and it needs to work on both systems. And that's why we need to answer to the recommendations. Uh, Mexico has an active participation in both systems, and that's why we have uh, continuous recommendations. We would like to thank the fact that you are using the tool. And using the tool means this, that we are able to evaluate and assess the tool to understand the actual compliance of the recommendations. And states usually are not held accountable for this, but for their regular reports. So there are a lot of voids or uh, gaps of information and therefore for organizations information is not available unless it is requested to us that is a great effort and that's why we believe that we can make this effort through this dialogue the system up to now has recommendations issued in the different reports we have discussed this with civil society organizations at different uh, points in history. The system does not include now the rulings and the precautionary measures for two reasons. One, because they request a validation, and second, because of the federal and general law on transparency and the data protection law. Second, we, uh, the state of Mexico is acknowledging the efforts made by the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights with the Inter-American CIMORE. I think that we should talk with the commission and with the states in order to find a single way to report this so that we don't have an overlapping. We, maybe we end up having different tools and mechanisms and those tools are too many. But I think that when we want to work uh, in these initiatives, we call the commission so that they can help us in order to have these mechanisms and to follow up the rulings and the measures. We have discussed whether we should include this or not. For example, when there are recommendations regarding non-reparation measures and uh, reparation measures or non-repetition measures, that's why we need to talk with the commission in order to find ways in order to include these recommendations from those cases. Uh, we address the recommendations presented in several reports and we make them available. We would like also to talk about what uh, Marie Claire was talking about. The system allows people to see what we are reporting, but also the quality of the information that we are showing. And that is a way to report institutions and in agencies so that they improve their actions 
so we have a better assessment. Taking into account what you were saying, we are going through a process. We are developing a mechanism and we want to clarify something. One thing is the tool and another thing is an institutional mechanism for the implementation of the recommendations. As Secretary Delgado mentioned in the National Program on Human Rights that has been implemented through a strategy, the government can follow up the recommendations and divides the responsibility. The secretary will create that mechanism and the secretary of foreign affairs will create a tool for to make a report on that. Before the launch of this program, we started the developing of these tools that allow us to have previous elements so that once this mechanism is developed, we have a, an experience. That's why this hearing is called uh, experience of a Mexican state that allows us to share this with other states and create better tools. We are open to improve the methodology and, and share them to do it in a collaboratory way. We wanted to say that up to now, we have only received one communication from an organization of the civil society since the system was launched. We invited everyone to send comments on the methodology. So after one year, these comments were not received by us. In spite of that, we take down notes of these comments. The best way of improving this tool based on our experiences. We also regret that due to some problems at some time, all data are not available, but we are in the process of improving the system. After uh, the communication we had with some uh, civil society organizations, we identified certain gaps and we are improving that for the 2.0 version. We are improving the structure so that it is user-friendly and that has been the result of the use made by the general director on human rights and the ministry of uh, or the foreign ministry in that sense it is important to divide our work firstly we request the commission to provide guidance to the states on how to create their follow-up mechanisms to for the implementation of the mechanism the recommendations the office of the high commissioner has developed this but we should have a dialogue within the inter the inter-american system because we have other elements that we need to implement so we need that dialogue gather states uh, so that they are oriented on the mechanisms. We would like to work with the Commission and civil society organizations to find uh, tools that allow us to receive information not only about the current state, but the quality of the information that the tools should include. In that sense, it's very important to us taking into account the effort you are doing with the Inter-American CIMORE if the states contribute to that system or do they need a national system to contribute to that uh, institutional experience. We are available to try to find better ways to report the information. We have had a conversation in Geneva last year with different organizations 
that was a event sponsored by the Office of the High Commissioner in order to present the system. Different states participated and we agreed that the office was going to send to Mexican different elements. And we are still waiting for that. We have had that dialogue and different civil society organizations around the world told us they were interested in creating mechanisms or tools are shadow tools that contrast. For example, when a report is sent by the state, there should be tools, shadow tools to make contrast and have a dialogue in order to improve the quality of the information. So, so we are available to keep on working. The state is here to create uh, this dialogue and We second what the commissioners have said, the importance of being gathered here to offer our work to improve the inform existing information regarding the responsibility of the states to implement your recommendations. We are out of time, but thank you. Thank you, Dr. Machina. I've been paying attention to your uh, comments, but also to the time I will request the the staff. I think the timer stopped, but the state had two minutes and forty seconds that it had not used in its previous uh, participation. So I will now give the floor to the civil society, unless the executive secretariat tells me otherwise. They have. Seven minutes left. Gracias. Um, gracias Thank a you. Las y los comisionados Thank y you relator, to the commissioners eh, and supuesto, the rapporteur on eh, his comments eh, and Dr. Machina no as well. Cosas we son, didn't eh, have time to mention certain things a, a lo in connection with what was I said by the foreign ministry and Commissioner Flavia mentioned something about the democratic character of the system. Tanto, creo que, bueno, and I believe that we want to conclude the presentation by the Indian Society by saying son that the system si no se su is rhetoric and impact impact in las it's victimas. mandatory in nature is unrecognizable. So the implementation of the national mechanism is important to follow up in order to have a better system to comply with individuales que otorgan protección internacional el estado ha solicitado la apertura de este diálogo temático que también desde la sociedad civil y academia celebramos sobre sistemas de monitoreo implementación y seguimiento de recomendaciones y de verdad reiteramos lo valoramos sin embargo requiriendo a la cdh que impulse los acuerdos y que se logren la implementación de estos acuerdos de la apertura que el doctor Ballinas es importante que también el estado mexicano no deje de lado que toda la conversación y toda la, la información que nos hemos dado de la información que nos hemos dado de la sociedad civil y desde la academia es parte de las obligaciones que tiene el estado mexicano al sentido internacional has supported international mechanisms and the progress in terms of human rights. Mexican state has to include the civil society, the academia and the victims in the validation and not only in the validation but the validation of implementation plans and follow-ups for the implementation of the recommendations. The civil society and the academia are willing to reactivate and work jointly in the fulfillment of the recommendations. Thus, we are committed and we are able y otras instancias gubernamentales, eh, reunirnos en la semana del 5 de abril o cuando mejor sus agendas eh, uh, se lo permitan, justamente porque ningún sistema de seguimiento puede funcionar sin la participación de nosotros no y especialmente de las víctimas. Y esto porque ningún mecanismo va a poder dar la rendición de cuentas sin la transparencia, sin la participación de todas. Muchísimas gracias. Y accountability only with the participation of us all. Thank you. 
do we have time? I would like to take the floor. Regarding what uh, Commissioner Flavia was saying, it's very important. The implementation and the fulfillment and the impact the system may have for the efficiency and uh, respect of human rights in that regard and adding the information to what Mary Claire was saying about our assessment regarding the report of actions made. I would like to say that this system takes into account two recommendations to validate the implementation of the criminal justice, create an instance to investigate human rights violations and crimes committed against migrants. Those are two recommendations included in the system and today are at risk due to the reform that the um, Office of the Attorney General and the Senate want to implement. So regarding the coordination the foreign ministry may have with the authorities in charge of implementing the recommendations, that is to say the Attorney General and the legislative power and the can. So I would like to say that because one, some weeks ago, we, in the collective against impunidemia, we presented a report on uh, the work carried out by the judicial power. And this um, contradicts what is shown by the system in terms of transparency, uh, lack of uh, autonomy, and a setback in the implementation of the criminal code. So the way in which this report works with what happens in practice, and particularly in the case of the Attorney General, but also how the foreign ministry, as it is in charge of the foreign policy, can have a dialogue with the executive power when they are promoting a law that goes against international recommendations. This is something we need to discuss, and we would like the Commission to follow up the situation to verify what Commissioner Playa was saying, that this system may be useful for the efficiency of human rights in Mexico. Thank you. Do you still have two minutes? The civil society wants to take up your time. Paula did not introduce herself. She, Paula Saucedo from uh, Article 19 Mexico was the one that spoke first. What we were saying and what the commissioners were saying that willingness on our part to have a dialogue and thank the willingness of the Inter-American Commission of uh, working as a bridge that would be very positive and we want to thank you for that as it has been mentioned we believe that we cannot have such an important tool without the participation of the academia and the civil society and the victims we believe this is very important to incorporate our perspective our experience and as it has been mentioned, how this impacts among the victims. They are the ones who would be the ones that should be enjoying the benefits of this implementation. So we would like to have a meeting with the aid of the commission maybe on the week of April the 5th. Thank you. Okay, I want to start by thanking the presence of each of the persons and organizations. I am convinced that there may be difficult dialogues, but it's better to have a difficult dialogue than no dialogue at all. I want to acknowledge the fact that the National Human Rights Plan in Mexico has designed this mechanism. And we also value the presence, the tone of this hearing. We value the fact that you have requested and follow up the work of 
the Commission Program 21 of our strategic plan in connection to the follow-up of uh, recommendations. They see more. This is essential. It is a tool, as Commissioner Arosemena and Piovesan were saying, this collaboration and follow-up of recommendations that has a positive impact on the victims. We also value that the civil society, your recommendations, your suggestions, uh, but also your willingness. You have mentioned to date, you have to assess that, but it's positive that you have this dialogue that is clear and all the recommendations from the different uh, sectors, from the academia, they are aimed at improving this mechanism. And in that line, the state and the civil society may be rest assured that the commission will accompany this process with their willingness to follow up recommendations. And we want to, we value the willingness of each of the persons present here. Having a difficult dialogue is better than having no dialogue at all. We believe that the commission, the victims, the civil society are aimed at respecting human rights. I want to finish by thank you all the persons present, the representatives of the state, the civil society, my colleagues, Commissioner Arosimena, rapporteur uh, of the country, her leadership is so important. Commissioner Piovesan, Commissioner Vallon, the special rapporteur, the executive secretary. And I want to publicly say that I want to thank all the staff from the Executive Secretariat working for this hearing to work, paying attention to the timer, to the organization. This is very hard work. And I this is my first time as vice president, so I'm able to appreciate their work even more. Thank you.